why I don't promote non-duality. The reason is because I find that non-duality and duality are two sides of the same coin. And when you focus on non-duality, what you're really doing is you're focusing on the opposite of what we're currently focusing on as a species who want to enhance the welfare of human beings. So we're so focused on subject object that it's led to selfishness that non-duality kind of balances, balances us out. The problem is, is there is truth to non-duality at the same, uh, to duality at the same time. And when you dismiss anything that involves like dualistic terms as like not true, that's actually coming from a belief system. So what I find is that the, the belief systems that people have generally come from stage turquoise in, if you want to bring in spiral dynamics, meaning they're afraid to be uh, dualistic is non-duality the highest truth possible? Maybe. It could be that after you reach the highest of stages of development, you realize there is no separation, we're one or all that, and and a non-dual uh, kind of awareness and teaching is prevalent. But the way I see it personally is that when you promote that too much, chances are you're not actually advanced. You're actually in stage turquoise believing you have to be non-dualistic. And my proof for that is that once you get into stage coral, if you try to sustain those dual, uh, those non-dual beliefs, it'll be very challenging for the heart that wants creativity and expression, because that's the pattern. It oscillates. So you're going to need, um, you're going to need that. You're going to need to be very uh, dualistic in a, in a, in a, in a way. So then non-duality is not the highest truth because you need something else. So really it has to do with the need and not has to do with objective truth. And later in development like you might come to an epiphany where really non-duality is the highest thing but i don't trust that people who are preaching non-duality are actually non-dual um they've tapped into it maybe some of them know it may, but to say it's a permanent state uh also a lot of these people in these permanent states they probably rely on some kind of systemic uh money transfer meaning they have a constant income and they have no, they have very few anxieties, and that's necessary for the development process. I agree with that, but at the same time, their attachments are so many that you know you remove one one leg from them and they go crumbling down. You take the most enlightened man on earth, uh, you you strip away his following, and he loses an ego. He loses his sense of well being. So you know, or whatever it might be, or you cut his income in half, or you. Uh, you tell them that uh, you can't uh, teach for a month, you know, how are they going to react when their attachments are at stake? And so many of these people who you think are in the highest tiers, you don't know that until they can be flexible, until they treat making a million dollars equally with not making any money. And, and to have a teacher like that for every regard is unlikely. But to get there, yeah, you need to be sustained with security and money and all that. And once you reach the highest point, you won't have those attachments. But to say that non-duality is the highest teaching, it's not. Because after you reach the highest, you're going to go back and do the laundry. What do you mean? The laundry is dualistic. So it's a belief system from stage turquoise. And a lot of people who think that non-duality is the highest thing, they haven't passed stage turquoise yet. Or they haven't passed stage teal yet. You know, or they're, they're in some feminine stage where they made a belief system about the no self or non duality or or uh, selflessness. Um, you know, not to be a certain way, you know, you know, versus being a certain way. Um, and that's that's just an interesting analysis that I want to share.